Black Book Mondays Radio, sponsored by LordlandFilms.com, home of a preacher's life and other Lordland shorts. And now, without further ado, it's the man with the plan, Brian Harris. Uh, Fish Out Radio provides the youth with a medium to be heard. In the words of Malcolm X, aka El Hodge Malik Shabazz, which happens to be my son's name, Malik. <laughs> but anyway, uh, with an educa- without an education, you are not going anywhere in this world. And he also said, education is the passport to the future, uh, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. And with that being said, let's get into the show. Um, how's everything going, Mr. Uh, Brian Harris? Hey, how you doing? It's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate you invite, inviting me to, to the show. It's a pleasure, man. Uh, um, I'm uh, overwhelmed uh, by a man of your stature when it comes to business uh, pursuits and, um, and entrepreneurship. And... Um, I want to let you know that um, this is parallel to what we're doing in, involving to Kids Shop, and um, I want to uh, ask you a few questions, and uh, hopefully you can give us some uh, really ba- uh, back your background story of Black Book and how it was formulated. Um, the first question is, uh, what inspired you to create Black Book? Okay, great. Um, about. Well, to give you a little history of what inspired me, I'd say it's my life uh, okay. story. Uh, I grew up in Gary, Indiana. Uh, mm-hmm. Grew up in uh, a place that was predominantly African American. Uh, I grew up middle class. Okay. You know, um, I had all of the things that I could want growing up, and I had great parents, great grandparents, etc. Mm-hmm. And they instilled with me the need and desire. To be the best. As a matter of fact, I graduated from Jerry Roosevelt, and our theme was "Be the Best." Mm-hmm. Um, went on to Purdue University, graduated electrical engineering technology, uh, went off to corporate America, worked in various uh, General Motors, what's now AT and T, and both engineering and operations and management, and have been able, successful throughout the period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I brought up, I was brought up with the belief that if you treat everybody fairly. If you work hard, then you're going to be treated fairly, you're going to be treated equitably, and everything would be great. Right. Uh, I was fortunate enough, I've started up plants in Mexico, in Reynosa, Mexico. I've lived in McAllen, Texas. I've lived around, and I saw this playing out kind of sort of like that. Uh, but as I went up and moved up to corporate uh, level, I started to see more and more it wasn't quite like that when it came to people who looked like me. Right. Uh, been successful in uh, operations uh, in multiple areas. Uh, we had a place uh, in Chicago, South Side Chicago. We had the best results in the five state region. Mm-hmm. Took over another area in northern Indiana, which included my hometown, Gary. Uh, they had the worst results in the five state region. In less than a year, we were in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, during that time, we hired a lot of people, so I was pressed to hire people. And I went out and I had to hire 25 managers, uh, which 17 didn't look like me, but eight looked like me. And we were able to turn it around with this group. But the biggest thing was not the turnaround. It was that there were people who didn't look like me that were very, very upset that people who looked like me were now managing them. Uh, So I started to understand that you can get results especially in corporate America, but when you try to promote on, based on really being colorblind, there would be a lot more of us in the upper management realms and going throughout. But there seems to be a quote, kind of an unwritten rule that you, if we promote you, you better not bring too many that look like you behind. Yeah. So it's a, it's a hard situation in corporate America to manage and you start to realize that maybe I was miseducated on some things that I thought. Mm-hmm. And I started to look around, I run my own business, uh, had a large HVAC company here, and I started doing consulting, and I started meeting people like Ernest Fountain, and talking more about black economics, 
and access to capital and what's really inhibiting the ability for African Americans to actually grow and prosper in this place called America. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me that, and I'll put this, America is a great uh, place that creates, uh, that, that is dependent on sub economies. And we're one of them, the black economy. We're a chain of different types of economies that really make this this strength, this chain, this strength called America. So America is really only is, is it's only as strong as its weakest link. Yeah. And so I started looking around. If African Americans have the highest unemployment, they have the highest incarceration, they have the lowest wealth, then everybody in America should be trying to strengthen that link, not trying to weaken it, uh, weaken it. But unfortunately, because of miseducation and because of almost a, people being afraid of the success of African Americans as a whole, we haven't been able to attain that American dream. But rather than blaming somebody else, the realization was that we need to create and support our economies. And the realization that is not racist, group economics is not racist, it's a part of America. The truth of the matter is you have the Asian community, which has less than 4%, probably 3% unemployment. Not because they're smart, but because they practice group economics. The Jewish community, the same thing. The Italian community. And right now, the growing Hispanic community, one of the big fears they have is they create their own jobs. They're creating an economy that is strong, uh, unlike ours. So we have to start understanding we were miseducated and then believing it doesn't matter who owns a business, it does matter. Because they determine who gets promoted, they determine who gets jobs, they determine where they are. We have to understand that we have to be a little selfish and, and go out of our way to support black owned businesses. And I had to kind of realize that education to start driving me this way. So uh, many times I heard people say, yeah, we need to support black owned business and shake their head on their way to Walmart. And I said, look, people say this, let me give you a vehicle to find black businesses. Because the other thing I heard was, yeah, we should be, and then there are not a lot of black businesses. Both of them were false in miseducation. Or the third one, I agree with you, but our black businesses need to get their act in order. These are three lies. These are the miseducation of black America that the black book is designed to defeat, to show people that A, there are a lot of black businesses. They are very good. They actually do more with less. And that we do need to support them so we can create jobs for, for our, us, for our children's children, for our friends. And we cannot be uh, dependent on the government or other entities to take care of black America. It's very simple. Stop blaming everybody. We need to look internally. We got to make some decisive decisions. We have to understand where this new economy is, and we have to be part of it, and not wait for somebody else to give us a piece. I mean, one of the things I, this WBKE is this is the first time I've been here, and I'm very impressed because, as I said, the future radio is internet, and we cannot just depend on being on somebody else's internet. We need to create our own entities like we're doing here if we want to be successful in the long run. So you asked me a question, I kind of gave you the long end round, but the people, my experiences of growing up in a predominantly African American city, to then transitioning to the real world, and, and then talking to some people in my life who got me to realize I need to go back and do soul searching. I need to be black and proud. Because that's a nice to cut both ways. I need to understand that it's okay to promote black economics, that it is not racist to want you to, to look first at yourself before you look at everybody else. I can love everybody else, but because I promote black power, that doesn't mean I hate anybody. Yes. It just means I love myself first. That's a very, very common misconception that is anti-white, and I'm glad you touched based on that. I completely agree with you. Black Book Mondays Radio, sponsored by LordlandFilms.com, home of a preacher's life and other Lordland shorts. And now, without further ado, it's the man with the plan, Brian Harris.